What's up, gang? How are we doing? Someone give me a shout out. We are finally alive-ish. My link says we're not live, but I think we're live. We're live. Can you cozy that little camera up on me? Kind of like we did the other night. So how are we doing? Question and answer period for my friends. So first, while we're getting this set up, let's give a, I'll give you the state of the union and what's going on here. And you guys tell me what's going on in your area. We are um, in Louisville, Kentucky. It is crazy times, as you can imagine. We're quasi on lockdown. Bars and restaurants are all closed. Um, we're teaching a couple private lessons. Um, that's about all that's going on. We're kind of stuck at home. Um, are we sideways on YouTube, or on Facebook? Facebook, we're sideways. Yeah, we got 12 people, but we're alive. So we're good on YouTube, that's good times. And how about Facebook? How are we doing on Facebook? Facebook is displaying sideways. You're gonna have to flip that camera again and probably redo that. Boy, oh boy. Hang on, Facebook, it's coming. So what kind of questions do we have? Yeah, I know it's sideways, it's craziness. I am a little sideways. I am a little sideways. But uh, YouTube's looking fantastic. Um, yes, we see and hear you. Yeah, bad microphone cable. Oddly enough, it's the same bad microphone cable that got us yesterday. Um, Facebook, we are trying to adjust that as we speak, right? Oh, we're up, up. It is what it is, it is what it is. Hello, uh, Mr. Steve from Nashville. Hello, Dan. Hey, Holly. What's going on? So where's, every guy, where's everybody from? I see Steve is from Nashville. And uh, we're good. You're welcome, Dan. I'm excited to be doing this. Um, so if you guys don't know, I'm from Louisville, Kentucky. So I brought us some bourbon, some Eagle Rare, if you happen to be an aficionado. Um, so what kind of questions do we have? What's going on with you guys? Facebook, we're coming back up. We're coming back up, Facebook. We're adjusting. It isn't available right now. Adjusted live. What's that? Pretty good. We're good. Hello from Singapore. What's up, Gordon? Good to hear you. What time is it there? Um, it's 8.30 here in Louisville, Kentucky, USA. Um, Let's get us our West Coast Swing on line up here on Facebook so I can see your questions. Um, six cases in lockdown in California. Um, yeah, so we're trying to Cleveland. What's up, Cleveland the House? Yeah, so we're trying to get you guys uh, at least entertained. So if you can watch me drink a little Kentucky bourbon with you guys. Uh, this actually came from an email. Someone said uh, <laughs> the live feed was bad the other night and it made him have to stop and have a drink, and so I appreciated that. Is there somewhere you can pop that camera in there? Is it not open? Um, so we got a couple of questions. Can you address the conversation between leaders and followers? Is there a predictable place in the music where there's a good time to have a conversation? Um, what's up, Brooklyn? Um, 8.30 a.m. in Singapore. Try to get my Facebook comments up as we go here. We could probably do uh, Facebook through the computer if you don't want to have to hold that. If you can unhook that whole thing, set the camera here, we'll put it right in front of me. All right, I think we're good to go. Yeah, there you go. I can't see myself, so if we turn this back around, hang on. Oh, we can't turn around. Boom, baby. There we go. How's that Facebook land? Are we reasonable? Reasonable. Looking at my nose a little bit, but that's good. Okay, so questions. We have questions about, um, what's up, Chicago? Um, so questions about, uh, explain, Richard. Can you address the conversation between leaders and followers? Is there a predictable place in the music, i.e. a 32-beat phrase, when there's a good time to have a conversation? Um, can you turn the volume up some? I cannot. I cannot. 
um, I cannot turn the volume up on my side. Um, you have the same phone, someone says. Yeah, that's actually Megan's phone, oddly enough. Megan is next door, and uh, she has the uh, iPhone 11, so it's a slightly better camera. Um, so to answer the 32-beat phrase question, like, is there a good place to have a conversation? I'm going to assume a conversation means a, uh, a point at which you would um, maybe have some play or where the follower would be able to take over. And the answer is, uh, generally speaking, on a one or an accent in the music would be a great place uh, for the follower to um, say the follower where the couple could have a little bit of a conversation. So typically, we talked last night in the musicality section, typically on ones in the music, there's an accent. And if, uh, if either the leader or the follower were to take over and allow there to be some, what they would call an old school play between the, um, between the partners, that would be a good place. Um, hello, Steve from Nashville, uh, Max from Brooklyn. Um, we had a question. Let's check uh, Facebook. Um, camera's set. So Facebook, do we have any questions there on Facebook? There's a bunch of you guys on Facebook, a good 30-some odd of y'all. Um, what's the trick to making the belly whip pop? What is a belly whip? Maybe, oh, maybe. I'm not sure what you mean by a belly whip, either a basket whip or um, a belly whip. And I, man, the first question I'm going to fail on because I don't dance that roll in whip very well at all. <laughs> it's one of my weak points. I've never been able to figure that silly pattern out. We broke down something similar to it recently, but not the same thing. Um, so I'm off to a failure. I'm scrolling through our Facebook comments, and they're coming in. So if you came here, what, was, what type of subjects are we thinking about uh, chatting about tonight? We'll talk about anything. We can talk about bourbon. We can talk about uh, COVID. 19, we could talk about what my day consisted of, which is trying to unravel uh, dance cruises in a time like this, or an event that we're supposed to be running in eight weeks, or the Kentucky Derby canceling, or musicality, or styling, or any of the, any of the like. I see Miss Emily Larson just popped into the live feed over there. What's up, Ms. M? Um, I don't know, let's talk about my day. What happened in my day? So we, uh, or in talks to the hotel, because we have a country and swing event that's supposed to be in two weeks called the New Lou Open, which is my way of combining my love of country dancing and West Coast Swing into um, the same event. And as you know, we're kind of on lockdown with no events over the next eight weeks with 50 or more people, which makes a dance event a really bad idea. And uh, welcome to the world of being a dance professional where the hotels don't really care. In the large part, we have a great sales manager, but they are um, trying to put us on, uh, they're trying to hold us to the whole darn hotel contract. And basically we'll find out tomorrow the fate of what they're going to try to do to me, um, and how much they're going to try to make me pay. But my theory is it's just not a good idea. And two weeks before us, what's up Kate, um, on Facebook. So two weeks before us is the Kentucky Derby and Churchill Downs Incorporated decided they couldn't run an event in May. And so if they make me, I'm going to be excited to grab the Courier Journal and uh, take them down why they told me that I am able to run an event and Churchill Downs could not run the Kentucky Derby. Um, Becky says you're working on rides. What type of rides are we working on, Becky? Um, and let's see. Um, Jill said she was hoping to get Jennifer Jeffries to convince Bill Robinson to postpone Peach State to a different weekend. Um, yeah, we love Peach State, so if this gets to Bill Robinson, um, a big shout out. We respect everything that you guys do. We were sad that Peach State didn't happen. We completely understand uh, what's going on, and we feel like we're in great hands with you at the helm of Peach State for all these years. For those of you guys who don't know, Peach State is the largest, um, I hope I'm not speaking out of turn, but the largest UCWDC or country dance competition um, running. It was should have been this weekend? this weekend, so we would have been headed to Peach State tonight. Um, oop! It fell over. Uh, we would have been headed to Peach State tonight, 
Um, but we unfortunately couldn't because the event did not happen, but we're sad uh, for, for all of us that go to Peach State, but it is the right thing to do, and we appreciate you, Bill, for all of the work that you did. And uh, shout out to all of your um, event directors who've had events that have been affected by this and dance professionals um, because it's a, it's a tricky time, and I'm one of those people. I've done an event in eight weeks, and we have a dance cruise going out in July, and I am getting... Um, for lack of better terms, slaughtered by contracts and that type of stuff. And um, so those of you guys who dance in studios and places around the world, the people who put their necks on the line, it doesn't matter when times are good and it seems like they're doing really well, but um, we're stuck dealing with a lot of baloney that we don't like to deal with in times like this. Um, but I do it because I love dancing and I'm thankful that I've got to do as much as I have in my life through dancing. And so I will take the L along with the win. So whatever turns out, turns out. Um, what are some good events, workshops, comps that someone ha that's relatively new to West Coast Swing? Um, someone that's relatively new to West Coast Swing. Um, that's a good question. Um, ah, the cam camera keeps falling over. It keeps falling over. We're gonna fix this like that. Boom, baby. Um, Ours, you just missed it, Derby City Swing in Louisville, Kentucky. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I would recommend starting, if you're looking for events, and I, I mean, I'll talk, there's all sorts of people that are gonna watch this, but in my world, there's probably three different style of West Coast Swing events. At the high end, you've got the US Open, Mad Jams, those type of events. Those are the best of the best. Those are the highest level competitors. Those have lots and lots of people and they can be incredibly intimidating to go to as a new person. Now, the people that run those events, they're fantastic people, but if you go to one of those events, keep in mind, typically those large, large events with a lot of competition will have social dancing that's starting late and it will feel super intimidating. Now, in the mid-tier, there's a lot of events that have some competition and, um, and plenty of social dancing. The culture of those events ranges widely um, but you can definitely find some events in that range that are very approachable, um, especially if you're interested in competition at all. Um, and then on the, I don't wanna say the low end, but the third tier, you'll find events that are purely social. So we live here in Louisville, Kentucky, 90 miles up the road is Swing and Dance Party run by Jason Micklick and Sophia Kidep, and that's a very approachable social dance event with almost no competition. So if you find an event that has very little competition, you'll typically find it to be a little bit more social because there's not competition eating up time in the schedule. Um, but that's not to poo-poo some of the West Coast Swing events that have competition because lots of them can be uh, uh, very approachable. And the ones that the US opens, the Mad Gems, those are spectacle on themselves. But just be wary when you walk into those scenarios that as a new person, you're gonna feel um, somewhat intimidated. Um, and that's also speaking from a North American perspective because I've not been to Europe over the last couple of years. Um, Gordon says the uh, Asia West Coast Swing Open was canceled in Singapore. I'm sorry to hear that. Um, yeah, that's everywhere, everywhere. Everything in the next six weeks has been canceled. Um, Someone says they're south of Boston. I lived in Boston. Uh, what do you think of West Coast Swing then and now? So I grew up, uh, what's up, Soraya? Soraya's online from Arizona. She used to live here in Louisville. Um, yeah, I grew up in Boston. I moved when I was 19 and I, in 94, and I started dancing in about early 97. When I was here, I was 21 years old. So I've been back, obviously, to Boston a bunch over the years and done some West Coast Swing and some events and some local workshops. So to answer the question of like, how has it changed over the years? Um, I recommend you guys look up past, present, and future of West Coast Swing. There's a YouTube video and there's also some um, links on our blog, West Coast Swing Online, the resources tab, scroll down, look for history. I did a talk with a, a cool dude named uh, Forrest Altman from, um, from Tampa, Florida. He's a dance historian. We talked about the change of West Coast Swing over the years and I realized that even though I've been only, been, only been dancing 20, or is it 23 years now, um, that I have seen a big shift in West Coast Swing. So I think the advent of YouTube and live video and the exposure that it's gotten in Europe has really upped the level, followed by just a natural shift in pop culture and in music. 
And so that is destined to take dancing in different levels. So there is a big difference. I think it's much more athletic these days. I think the level is much higher from a, an athletic perspective. And I think that's partially due to, number one, we stand on the shoulders of the people who came before us, for sure. And number two, I think the video uh, reach of YouTube has exposed lots and lots and lots of people to the dance. And so therefore, it has, uh, it has changed and changed rather rapidly. Um, Gidget's watching. Uh, do you know anything about a Canadian events in terms of social for newcomers, especially in Toronto? Um, I know there's an event in Toronto, and I can you look up the event in Toronto? What's uh, well, I don't know about Toronto. I know there's Montreal Westie Fest, and we'll look up the date for that. Um, on the far coast, it just got canceled. Um, was Calgary Dance Stampede? It would have been the first weekend in April. I love that event as a social dancer. Um, and a non-competitor, that is a fantastic event. There's, it's the largest North American, largest workshop event in North America. It has a hundred and something workshops, some fabulous teachers. They even let Megan and I show up. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's a really, really good staff, really first class event. I love the people who run it. Um, I tell people all the time about it because it's, a, a, it's really a hidden gem. Um, what's the weekend? The Toronto Hustle Swing. July 9th through the 12th at the moment. July 9th to the 12th is a, is a West Coast Swing event in Toronto. I don't know much about it, to be perfectly honest. Who runs it? We'll look that up for you. <coughs> Let's scooch back over to YouTube. Um, oh, I got gotcha. you. Oh, here we go. Some questions on YouTube. Um, Let's scroll down. Coming out of a whip and swinging the leg around to anchor instead of triple step, yes, for sure. Um, Becky says she's working on rides and uh, where you're connected to your partner and moving around in a circle would be a, a, a version of a ride. Um, it is very much the culture now to, uh, hope the old people don't get mad at me, to not triple on the anchor quite a bit. There's a lot of uh, sweep into a step instead of a typical anchor step and I think that's a product of the music um, and since I'm bridging the old school to new school, I'm going to have to drink with the fact that triple steps are disappearing from West Coast Swing. Eagle Rare Bourbon. <laughs> um, so someone asked, we run a Swing and Country cruise uh, that will be out of Seattle in July. And someone asked, is that going? And Judy, or Jean, I'm sorry. That is a very good question. We're working on that today. We will have an answer hopefully early next week. As far as we know now, it is still on. Obviously, this is a, literally a day-by-day -day thing with the cruise industry and the travel industry in general. So we are on top of it working with Royal Caribbean. So as of the moment, we are still on. We're full steam ahead, but um, there is a good chance that because of a various different reasons that it might not go, but don't worry. You're on our list. We have everyone lined out, and we will be contacting people and updating everyone as to the, uh, the, the situation. Um, Diane says, thank you for what you do for the West Coast Wing and Country World, especially for those of us online who are getting it for free. You are very welcome. Uh, Richard says, the screen is frozen. Is it frozen? It looks good on mine. Um, Yeah, um, so the question was, especially those, oh, so you're welcome for all this free stuff. And that's kind of my groove. Um, we are offering a lot of free stuff up. We do have some paid stuff. If you want to support us, you're welcome to go to West Coast Swing online, um, enter your email address, drive through, and get a membership to all of our stuff. So we have a paid membership section. It's 20 bucks a month or $200 a year that has all of our videos. So I think in current count, there's about 500. Um, but it is my goal to help as many people as I can. A few people are willing to pay for our paid content. That makes us all very happy. And for those of you guys who do support us for the paid content, thank you because it helps us uh, continue to do what we do. Um, so I think we're back, yeah. What are some styling for the line dance that can make it more challenging for some of the individuals without affecting the overall look? So when we talked about sweeps, or leaving out um, triples. So in any of the triples, you can use slides that take two beats that would also um, cover the beat structure. So if I did walk, walk, triple, step, if I'm doing a right side pass with the follower, walking on the right foot, walk, walk, triple, step, I'm landing on the right foot for four. 
If I did walk, walk, and slide with a hold and an anchor step, that would still be six beats um, and preserve the, uh, the integrity of the dance. So that's kind of the goal of that West Coast Swing line dance is that you can take out triples and add in syncopations. As long as you're staying within those six and eight beat fundamentals, um, everything will still work. And we will expand on that. We'll do that a little bit more. I quite like that. We'll expand the classes to give us a little bit more time too. Um, Facebook is good. They're bouncing between the two. What's the Facebook link? Uh, if you go to Facebook uh, slash West Coast Swing Online or just go up into the search bar and put in West Coast Swing Online, you'll find the page, scroll down, you'll find the live feed. Um, Tosh is in Toronto. Montreal West Reef Fest is in Montreal in October. Um, there's a new one, BTO open in February. Thanks for the shout out. That just happened. Um, is there a good way to express teamwork uh, when dancing in novice Jack and Jills? So you will hear if you're competing in Jack and Jills, and this would pretty much apply for social dancing because um, at its highest level, Jack and Jills are just really good social dancers, right? Which is why I like Jack and Jills. So um, is there a good way to express teamwork? When you're dancing in Jack and Jill's, you'll hear um, t timing, teamwork, and what's the other T? Teaming, teamwork, teamwork, timing, team. Let me have another drink. Um, so teamwork. Yeah, so Jen Wilkinson asked if this is stag. Um, no, it is not stag. I considered bringing the stag out, but that's expensive, and I thought someone would get mad at me if I brought my expensive bourbon out in times like these. So it is not the stag. This is uh, Eagle Rare. You can get this for like under 40 bucks at most of your liquor stores and it's one of my favorites. Um, so is there a good way to express teamwork when dancing West Coast Swing Novice? Of course, um, all the time, right? What is teamwork? In essence, it is the ability to monitor your partner and dance appropriately with them. That would be teamwork, right? So if your partner is styling and funking it up, and your ability to, within the connection, follow that, either from the leader or follower perspective. And that can be done at every level, um, but it is not, it's not easy. So remember, every dance is easy to do, every dance is hard to do well. Um, so hopefully that answers your question, maybe not practically. Um, Lori Schaefer says that she is a member of our site and it's worth every penny. Thanks for the shout out, Lori. Sorry we missed you this year up in, um, Calgary, we will hopefully make it back. Um, someone said, can you ask a country two-step question? Heck yeah, talk to me about, talk to me about two-step. Um, I gotta read this. Hang on, I'm gonna read your two-step question. Of course you can ask two-step two -step question. Um, but these Facebook lines, so let me read this. Can I ask a two-step question? If you wanna focus on West Coast, that's cool. No, let's talk two-step. Um, Keeping track of the quick, quick, slow, slow pattern once I start turning and I'm led through lots of turns, which is fun about two-step, are there things to practice without getting so lost? Currently, it makes me nervous because I always end up kicking my partner. So, don't kick your partner. Aim not near your partner when you kick. You shouldn't be kicking in two-step. No, <laughs> jokes aside. Um, Basic good turn technique is going to help, right? So if you just um, Google West Coast Swing turn technique, I've got my whole philosophy of turn technique laid out on the website. So you can just Google West Coast Swing turn technique and it's the same for two step or not. So one of the thought processes that I use in two step is to think my timing, not quick, quick, slow, slow, but quick, 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 hold, quick, hold, meaning the foot strike is at the same speed, no matter if it's a quick or slow. How long I stay there tells me if it's a quick or a slow. So if you think in your basic, quick, 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 hold, quick, hold, quick, 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 hold, quick, hold, that will help clarify your timing. So then you gotta be very rhythmical or clear about your turns. Quick, 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 hold, quick, hold, right? So that would be quick, 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 slow, slow. And you just gotta be very precise about the turns and then precise about the slow, slows ending it. Now, can the leader screw that up for you? For sure. Can you screw that up as the follower by not being clear and rhythmical in your turns? For sure. Whose fault is it? Both. So if a pattern, whether it's West Coast Swing or two-step does not work, it's, um, I say it's a failure of the partnership because if any one person was good enough, they would be able to make up for the other. 
So if the whole thing doesn't work, you both kind of had something that you could do to help it, right? So as the leader, if I could keep you on time and keep you from kicking me, that would be a high level of my lead skills, even if it was all your fault, right? But on the flip side, if my lead was terrible and it was Miss Emily or Miss Megan dancing with you leaders, um, they would be able to manage to stay on time during the turn and not kick the leader. So I think if it completely falls apart, there's a, something that the follower can do and something that the leader could do to help that. Um, and practically speaking, it would just be some basic turn technique and the thought process of going quick, 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 hold, quick, hold. Um, Annie said, we'd love to come to a West Coast Swing country and line dance event one day. We're from London, UK. Love London, love the UK. Got some friends there, lots of friends there actually. And uh, back when I started, country, swing, and line dance were all in the same event. We used to call it a three ring circus. And those for me were the most fun times. Um, and there are very few events left that have all three. And one of them would have been this weekend. And that was Peach Date, which has a very healthy line dance um, country couples and swing uh, contingency. So sad to hear that. So what else we got? Let's go back over to YouTube. Now I can see. Um, so Becky says technique. Technique in what area? Um, technique in live feeds, we're still mastering our technique and it takes practice to get good at dancing. It takes practice to get good at live feeds. <laughs> and we're practicing a lot. So I think we're a little bit better tonight. This one's going pretty well. Um, Diane says, Brian, we're fairly new to West Coast Swing. Can you explain what a Jack and Jill is? Great question. Super good question. So a Jack and Jill could be done in a bunch of different dance forms. It's basically where a Jack, which would be a leader, um, in old times a guy, and Jill, which in modern times is a follower, back in old times, i.e. like a year ago, was a girl, <laughs> right? Where they match up leaders and followers randomly. So if you imagine there are 20 leaders and 20 followers, they come up in a line, they rotate them a random number and you're assigned a random partner and then they'd play a song. And so then you would dance to a random song that you don't know what it is with a random partner that you might and probably have never danced with. And then they will in essence judge the competition, right? It gets a little bit more complicated than that, but that's the essence of it. And uh, so it is a pure, social dance competition. So it's your skills as a leader in a social situation and your skills as a follower in a social situation and your ability to dance within that and dance against the people around you. So what I love about it is if you can do the basics, you are qualified to do a Jack and Jill. What I dislike about it is it is a competitive um, dance sport. I think people get hung up too much on the results and it's not something you can control quite a bit of because you can control yourself, but you can't control the partner you get, you can't control the song you get. So of the three variables, you're only in control of one. So the results don't necessarily um, reflect your abilities, right? So you could be very good, get a bad partner, bad song, and not do so well. You, so it's not a direct reflection of your natural abilities. Um, what else we got? Did you see, did you read a comment? Yes, the technique was, that was the third T you were missing. Oh, timing, teamwork and technique. Thank you, Becky, I appreciate it. So they were talking Jack and Jill's about timing, teamwork and technique. And you could boil that down to timing, stay on time, very difficult. You'll actually find a lot of high level dancers that actually struggle with timing. Um, Technique, would that's wide encompassing, right? It could be your turn technique, your styling technique, your um, ability to move your body, your lead and follow techniques, that's wide ranging. And then uh, teamwork would be your ability to do that together, your ability to manage the situation with different leaders and followers. Um, Becky also says there's a fun event, in, fun event in Lake Tahoe for country swing and hustle called Mountain Magic in November. That sounds like a fine place to go. I think I'll come. Um, what do we do in November? Nothing. Nothing's going on in November. We have a cruise in October, if we take the cruise in October. Um, thank you, Becky. I appreciate you very much. Um, so someone said country you mentioned, uh, and that social media, oh, this is a great one. I can talk. I'll have a drink on this one. So Dan said, I mentioned country, 
and that um, social media had helped West Coast Swing and that he thinks that country social dancing is on the down curve, what are my thoughts? This is exactly what I want to talk about because I have some thoughts around this. Um, yeah, no, I 100% think that um, free live video has benefited West Coast Swing. The Jack and Jill videos and the abilities for events to put out great content and inspire people um, was a big reason that West Coast Swing was able to permeate, right? Because if you lived thousands of miles away in a different country and you got introduced to West Coast Swing, you had the ability to watch the videos from across the pond and gain something from that, right? And that is 100% missing in the country world. And I'm going to call out some people because I have a sip of bourbon and say that the main country dance organizations are a little bit slow to react to that. And I 100% believe that. And I put out a lot of free videos. So I kind of understand the competitive space. I understand the social event space. I understand the dance event space. And I understand the video space. And so because country dance events have been slow to allow free video, there is not a lot of video to inspire people um, across the country and across the world into country dancing. And this comes from a guy who was elected to the Country Dance Hall of Fame in 2017. I love country dance. I have a cowboy hat. I have a lot of spandex with sparkles on it with country accents on it. So I freaking love country dancing. But they have, and I say they, meaning the major organizations, have been slow to react to the video thing. But what are we doing? we're putting out some country dance videos. So um, that is going to come, and we're going to remedy that. Um, we have a, uh, a new site that's going to launch relative to country dance. We've got another one dedicated to competitive country dance, and we're about to push out a bunch of country stuff in an um, effort to expand country dancing over the next couple of years as best that we can. And that was also our goal with our event in two months. Um, the newly open country and swing event was to um, kind of combine West Coast Swing and country and expose the awesomeness the country is to other people. So that is my thought on, on, on yeah, country dancing. Um, Paige, who is a friend of mine here from Louisville, Kentucky, wants to know what kind of bourbon, because uh, her boyfriend and I have drunk bourbon before, and this is Eagle Rare. It is a fine selection for under $40. It is not the most expensive, but it is top shelf good Buffalo Trace sourced bourbon from about 45 minutes from here in Louisville, Kentucky. Um, what's up, David Miller? Um, someone said, what approach do you suggest for mature dancers, 60 years old, who have a couple of years of West Coast and your body cannot do all of the athletic moves? I'm with you. I'm with you. I'm 44, I've kept myself in good shape, but I have a bad back and I too cannot do all of the athletic moves that I would like to do. Um, so I definitely think that there is a place in West Coast Swing that you can use all of the basic techniques and styling that all of us teach, right? All of the basic fundamentals. Um, you will not be able to kick over your head like Miss Emily can. You will not be able to walk in crazy knee walks like the you know, US Open champions can. Um, so we did a, Megan and I did a breakdown of a, a, of a high level champion Champions Jack and Jill. So if you go through our last video, somewhere in the last couple of videos, we did a breakdown. And if you watch the, the move that we broke down, the, I think it was Victoria Hank was walking crazy on the ground with her knees in this crazy athletic way. And we broke down the same pattern with the same connection with just a natural walk, nothing that required that level of athleticism. So I think you can use the... Um, so I think you can use the concepts of connection and lead and follow to enjoy the dance at your physical level, right? I do not like followers that dip to the ground and do crazy things because I have a bad back, um, but I don't feel like I'm particularly limited in what I can do. So I can still approach all of those moves just in a slightly less athletic way, right? You can run at 60 years old, you're just not gonna be as fast as you are at 25, but the effort still feels the same. Um, there was another one. Can you give suggestions for a follower on Suggestions for a follower on how to follow a soft leader. Yes, master your footwork. Master your footwork and your ability to move your own body. Um, because the more that you master that ability to move within your own body with a very, very light lead, the less it will bother you how light the lead is. I, my teaching experience, I find that 
followers who are not very comfortable or strong in their own footwork and body movement tend to rely on leaders more. And they will tend to like to dance with good leaders. And by good leaders, I mean they're experienced leaders who are making up for the fact that you're not quite as good, right? And we're all new, so don't, don't feel bad about that. That's totally normal. In a big group of dancers, there's plenty of those people and there's nothing wrong with that. But the idea on how to dance with a leader who's light is to master your own footwork. So my students, I tell them, and right on the other side of this wall, we've done this a gajillion times over the last 20 years, you should be able to dance uh, pushes, passes, and whips all by yourself to the music. So if we start doing a social dance with a student, I'll just let go of them and then they go, they know. So I'm gonna go sugar push and they dance the sugar push by themselves. Side pass, they dance the side pass by themselves. Whip, they dance the whip by themselves. And I'm dancing my footwork with them, but I'm not touching them. If you can do that to music, to speed, all by yourself, you will be in a different stratosphere regardless of who you dance with. Um, so that's my question, my answer on that. Um, Jack went down. <laughs> Someone said Jack went down the hill because he couldn't get any love from Jill. Cool song. Cheers, Jack. I feel your pain. <laughs> um, Mr. 501 said, thanks for your thoughts on the country dancing industry. And I love the country dancing industry. And that's why I'm here to help. I don't want to be part of the problem. I want to be part of the solution. Um, can we still see? Good. Oh, it shut off. Sorry, Facebook, and we kick off at, I forgot that camera kicks off at 30 minutes. YouTube. So Facebook, you're still good. YouTube kicks off after 30 minutes. Um, can you write in the, YouTube, in the Facebook, in the uh, YouTube comments? Oh, they can. All right, YouTube, our camera's coming back on YouTube. Hang with me. Uh, I forgot that our camera shuts off after 30 minutes. Actually, the camera shuts off after 30 minutes. It's a DSLR camera. Um, so Daniel says, how do you think your team and organizers will survive such a bad time that uh, COVID-19 has given us? Boy, oh boy, oh boy, that's a good question. Um, so I'll speak from personal experience, right, right here. Um, so let's start with dance cruises, right? So the cruising industry is in shambles, right? So we are stuck following what the cruise industry tells us. So obviously the, the, the powers to be are in charge of the safety of, of all of us. And so we start there. Um, then internally, right, we thankfully as a business, we are pretty um, diverse as a dance business. We do dance cruises and events and online videos and we have a physical studio. Um, so from that standpoint, um, from that standpoint, we've got a couple of irons in the fire. Now for us personally, that just means that my day today was stuck coping with, um, hotel contracts for our event and the cruise industries and what might happen there. So those are challenges in and of themselves. And I'm in a unique situation that I'm dealing with both of them, which is a bit of a struggle. Um, now, what do we do with the studio here? It's the same thing, right? Oh, we're back up on, on uh, YouTube, cool. Um, that camera shuts off after 21 minutes. It's uh, 29 minutes, the DSLR. Um, so for the studio, you know, again, we're stuck with local regulations of no gatherings of more than 10 people. So we keep the, the studio attendance to less than 10. Um, we've not directly been subjected to any um, considerations with that. Um, and then me personally, and I'll, this is just talking real stuff, um, you know, the people that I work with day in, day out, Miss Megan, Miss Emily, Ben, uh, Jacob, my mom who works for our company, you know, even though we're a, a company, the people that I work with are my friends and family, and so I have a direct, uh, um, what's the word, um, responsibility to make sure that we can all kind of get through this. So. I feel bad because I'm in a fortunate situation that seven years ago I had back surgery and I was um, tasked, huh, Ben, your face is on that live feed on YouTube at this point, which is hilarious because it's coming through. <laughs> oh my Kyle, that's hilarious. Um, 
Yeah, so um, you know, I've been in a position where I was fortunate actually in 2013 to go through back surgery and it allowed me to understand my mortality as a dancer and the fact that most of us in this industry are you know, a couple of paychecks away from bad times. And so that got me off my rear end seven years ago to build a business around me that fortunately will hopefully be able to survive bad times. And so I legitimately feel bad for service industry workers and dance teachers and people who are not in the position that we're in to be able to at least absorb some of the the bad stuff, but um, make no mistake, even though we're probably in a better situation than most, it's crushed us hard, literally in the last week. Um, so, yeah, yeah, if those of you guys know me, we used to put out, about how many years ago did Start Now videos come out? 2018, I put out a string of about 25 videos called Start Now, and it was basically, um, I ranted against YouTube uh, not YouTube, I rented against um, GoFundMe. GoFundMe videos and saying that a lot of GoFundMe videos were asking for things that weren't particularly necessary, like, oh, donate to me because I want to go to a dance competition. And my argument in some of those videos was start now because if you're not in a position to do some of the fun things you'd like to do now, you might not be in a position to absorb something that goes wrong, right? Whether you get injured or sick or God forbid this craziness that's going on around us. So those were the start now videos that I put out in uh, relation to taking care of your stuff for the long term. So hopefully we're in a good position. Um, and again, we got a little bit more free time than we'd like. So what else can we do but put out some free content, keep you guys entertained uh, and do some good in the world. And hopefully on the other side, we'll all be better for it. Um, so that's what our team thinks about this. Um, yeah, YouTube went down for a little bit, but we're back up. Any other questions, Facebook friends? Gordon, you have one. What's Gordon say? Are you planning to post this video unless your team needs to apply on teamwork? Teamwork. Can you write a note for me? So you guys give us um, uh, video suggestions. We put them into a spreadsheet and then we schedule them out. So Gordon, I will shoot a video on teamwork and put that out in time. I'm not sure when it's going to arrive out. We have a long video shoot scheduled tomorrow, um, and those videos will be going out in the weeks coming, but you are on my list, my friend, and I appreciate your support. Um, let's see. Uh, Mr. Yeah, read me. Yep. Yeah, so the question, if you guys couldn't uh, read that, is people, they go to a lot of events, and there are some events, and back pre-YouTube, pre quite frankly, and pre-Facebook, you would go to events, and a lot of the top-end workshops were paid workshops. So you'd pay your weekend fee, but then to take some of the best workshops, you would pay another 5 or $10, I think it's $5, to go to that workshop. And so even after paying, the, the question came in and said, even after paying for those uh, event passes and workshops, they were still required to, um, the event goer was still required to pay money to video. Yeah, so this is another thing that I've been, I've been on about, and let's give a quick little context. So that's the way it used to be, and it used to be we didn't have video cameras in our pockets, and so you would buy a DVD from a video company that would be at these events, or if you were a competitor in the ballroom world or country world, you would pay as much as $25 per dance. So if you did 10 dances, you'd pay $25 per dance times 10. So you'd pay $250 uh, just to watch yourself on video. Now that came at a time when we didn't have cameras all around us, right? I'm looking at this computer is a camera, this phone's a camera, there's a phone here that's a camera, I got one in my pocket, there's one there. There's cameras all around us. So that was the model and what ends up happening is there's a nice guy that works as the video company guy, right? And the guy makes a living taking videos at dance events. So even though everyone now has a cell phone in their pocket, I got my buddy who is the video guy. And I like this guy and he's been coming to my event for 10 years and he makes his living off videos. And I have a friend that's watching his live feed that makes his <laughs> living off videos, right? And so, but what happens is the, the, 
the, in, the, the our li life shifts and now there's video cameras that are readily available. And so the question is, do I want my buddy to continue making a living or has, have things changed? And in my estimation, things have changed. We all have cameras in our pockets. So in time, in time, we are all going to, um, there's going to be free video everywhere, right? So the question for the event organizer is, does he tell his buddy, sorry, Joe, uh, you can't make your living uh, taking videos and charging people at events because I'm going to let people video free, right? So because most of us in studios and there's a lot of events that allow free video, it makes the ones that aren't um, look like they're doing something wrong. But it is within their rights to do it. I personally don't agree with it, but I understand the situation. I'll tell you another story. We did uh, something called Pure Dance with Mario Rabal. It's a about a hundred person workshop that he moves around. So we had Pure Dance Chicago and there's Pure Dance Houston and Pure Dance Raleigh. And he gathers together a bunch of really cool workshop instructors, puts them in a small event, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, um, in cities around the world. And you get small access with a hundred people to these videos, to these uh, workshops. Fantastic idea. So we did one at a friend of mine's studio up in Chicago and they charged a weekend video pass. Now, Mr. Free Video is working with his friends and they're charging videos. But what they did was they donated the money to charity. And I thought that was a brilliant idea because now no one wants to cheat and take free video when other people are paying for it. And so they took the money and they donated it to charity. And that, that for me was kind of a cool win-win because everyone got the video, they paid a couple bucks and went to charity. Um, but that's why it happens. So I understand why it happens, but we're gonna get to a point where there's free video everywhere. So my argument is let's just put it out there and um, because it's out there anyways, right? And that, does that help or hurt the industry? It only helps, right? We're not paying to watch the Super Bowl feed. I get it in essence for free. Um, uh, so, love what you're doing. Do you have any plans for more online classes? Absolutely. West Coast Swing Online forward slash live. West Coast Swing Online forward slash live. That is going to be your hub for our group classes. If you go there now, you'll see the rest of the classes for this week with links to the YouTube feed. We'll keep getting better at these as we go. Um, and so that's what's going to happen. Um, that's what's going to happen with the, the live video. So kind of for the foreseeable future, you can count on live videos at least six days a week. We've had them, what do we have? Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday this week and various uh, levels of video. So those are going to continue West Coast Swing Online forward slash live. Now, if you guys are watching this and are not signed up for my, either you Facebook or you YouTube are not signed up for our email list, that is the number one best way to communicate with us. So right now go to West Coast Swing Online, you can enter your email address on the front page. That's going to get you a free membership to our site, 30 something free videos. More importantly, it's going to land you on our email list. We send out emails at least twice a month. The first, the, uh, every other Tuesday at two o'clock Eastern, we send out free videos. So twice a month, free videos. The other advantage it does is it lets us communicate. You can send me questions via email. The whole team answers them myself, Miss Megan, um, we answer the emails and write back and forth. So you can ask us questions for future videos, but that also lets us communicate where we're going to do projects like this, send you the information you need. Um, so if you are not already signed up, do that westcoastswingonline.com front page, enter your email address. You'll get a free membership to the site, 30 free videos, but more importantly, you'll land on our email list. So send that to people and encourage them to get on our email list because we can communicate and give you more free stuff. I saw, um, George Yeager said, please do a video detailing the rock and go done, done, George. So that video is already shot and it will be out here in good time, probably in the next couple of weeks. Um, but we already did that earlier this week. Um, Emily dropped the link to our live classes there in the chat in YouTube. Um, it's also, if it's not already in the comments section of the video, we'll have to add it there too. Um, any other questions for you guys, Facebookers? What's up, Teresa? What's up, Wendy? George Kelly, if he's still watching. Any other questions, YouTube, Facebook? What do we got on our brains? What? I said, does Facebook or YouTube have any more questions? I'm gonna have one more sip of bourbon. Yeah. We got 11 more minutes. We got 11 more minutes to our chat. 
You're going to make me drink more bourbon while I'm trying not to make too much noise. Um, Mr. 501 says, I wasn't suggesting to get something for free, but your comment about supporting and encouraging more people to participate in country dancing. Um, the events don't seem to be doing their part. Um, let me give a take on that, Mr. 501. Um, we're Mr. 501. It's Mr. Mr. B501, so I'm Mr. Brian in area code 502. So we're like brothers. Um, I will say this, and it's, it's especially um, poignant at a time like this, right? Because people who are running events are stuck dealing, and I'm one of those people, we're stuck dealing with hotel contracts and lots of risk. So first and foremost, big shout out to all the people who run events and studios and business owners, because although the rewards can be great, the risk is also great. And especially at a time like this, the risks suck. It's not fun, right? So first of all, shout out to those people. Now, when things are humming along and, and, and going well, um, should the events be doing their part? And again, here's my take. Yes, that would be great, but I don't think that a lot of the people running events are necessarily paying attention to all of the things that, that I think we try to pay attention to here, right? Because in the studio, we're paying attention to a studio behind us and local people that are just looking to dance for their wedding or take a group class or learn some salsa or compete in country swing ballroom, whatever they are, right? We're also very much entrenched in a competition culture and I've danced in, in line dance and country couples and swing and, and ballroom and all that stuff. We're also doing dance cruises. So we're paying attention to all of it. A lot of times event directors are just um, excited dancers who decide that they do want to help and their, their act of helping is to run an event, buy an existing event, start an event. So they're already putting themselves out there. Now, should they be doing more? No, I don't expect all of them to do more, right? I would like for them to, but I don't expect all of them to um, have the expertise in all of the areas. So that's kind of where we jump in and we go, hey, we get the online space, we get online videos, we'll take that responsibility and we'll do that. Check this out. Who's calling me right now? We're just gonna do this live. That's my mom, right there. Let's answer this call on live on video, it'd be fun. What's up, mom? We're live on YouTube right now. We can't, I can't answer a question about pay on live on video. <laughs> I'm really live on YouTube and Facebook right now, so I can't answer it. I really can't answer a question. Yeah, you can watch this back. I can't answer a question about pay right now. <laughs> bye, love you, bye. <laughs> so if you didn't think it was real, that's real. That's real. How funny is that? Yeah, you can't answer a question about pay. How much am I supposed to pay someone? Um, John said, shout out to Megan. Um, we really enjoyed our videos. I can't read it. Can you read it? You're welcome. Uh, we're welcome. We loved hanging out with you guys, and we're excited to do it again when the craziness ends. They What's that? Have a lesson with Megan here. here. Oh, they came there with Megan. Oh, yes. Shout That's out to Megan. awesome. Oh. John and Susan. John and Susan. We should have hung out. Maybe I was out of town. I don't know. Um, Cheryl, we miss seeing you at you at uh, Peach State as well. Um, what do we got on the YouTube side? I can't see anything on YouTube. Hang on, Facebook. No, I didn't do that. Is Megan on? Is Megan on? Megan Anderson, is that you typing in the YouTube comments? That's probably Megan. There you go. Megan, Boom. Any other subjects to cover? Anyone? Bueller. Bueller. Don't make me drink again. This is fun. I haven't had any bourbon for a couple of weeks. I want to keep my immune system strong. It's true. Are you going to type something in, Benjamin? No. Don't be a goof. Don't be a goof. I think it's cool that I answered a phone call from my mom. Becky said, are you seeing young students coming in to teach West Coast Swing and Line in groups too? We have several in our area and they are fun to watch. It's been like I can't any longer. 
Yeah, our young people, so Becky said, our young people uh, coming into West Coast Swing to allow it to keep alive longer. And I think West Coast Swing is pretty alive and well, to be 100% honest, right? It's always been a smaller niche dance in the grand scheme of things. Um, you could just look, if we are the biggest YouTube channel for West Coast Swing, and then you look at the biggest salsa dance channels, they're much, much, much larger, right? So I think we are alive and well. I think there's a lot of young people being exposed to it um, as best as all of us can. So I feel the future of West Coast Swing is alive and well. Um, yeah, so I'm not worried about it. Lots of young people, um, lots of talented dancers. It's alive and well in Europe. So I traveled quite a bit in the early 2000s, 2001 to 2010 or so, quite a bit in Europe and it was not very present and it very much is now. So I think worldwide is definitely um, exhibited quite a bit of growth. So I'm not worried. I think free video has helped West Coast Swing quite a bit. There's been a lot of growth in competitions and events and people being exposed to it. And hopefully West Coast Swing Online has had a part in um, exposing people in the gaps. What is that? I hear noise. Someone's leaving outside. Um, so I feel like West Coast Swing is healthy and I'm glad. Someone said, how old am I, how old was I when I started dancing? 21 years old, um, 21. I moved to Louisville in 94 and I started dancing in 97. So I was 21 and a half to be exact. Um, and I started in a country bar with line dancing and then quickly after that two step and West Coast. So those two dances have been present my entire dance career and um, yeah, throughout the years I've competed in ballroom and country and swing and what else? That's it. None of the rest of that stuff. Line dance. Line dance. Um, what else we got? Do you have a question, Miss Emily? Give me a question. Extensions? In what way? Um, so adding in on your sugar coats, you said between one, two, three, and four, there were one, two, and doing an extra one wall. Ah, so Ben, who, uh, what, can I add some context to you, Ben? Yeah. yeah, so Ben, for context, walked into our studio, what, seven years ago or so, and walked into a group class and then said, yeah, group classes don't work well for me because I learned too fast. And in my estimation, people who get good at dancing both think they're a little bit better than they are and they're patient to stick at it for a long period of time. So that is a good combination in my book. And so Ben um, has turned into quite a good dancer after all these years with limited talent. <laughs> but a big shout out to his hard work. And so he asked the question, of, he's behind the camera, he asked the question of like how to add extensions to West Coast Swing. So the best way to think about West Coast Swing is, is, is in two beat increments. So if you think of a walk, if you think of a sugar push, right? First two steps are walk, walk. How many beats is that? Two beats. The next is a triple step, triple step. Three steps, but only two beats of music. The anchor step is three steps, triple step, but only two beats of music, five and six, right? So if you think about West Coast Swing in two beat increments, um, then it is very easy to extend those two beat increments, specifically in the walk, walk, right? So if you start, if you imagine either leading or following a sugar push, if you do walk, walk as the leader, but you continue moving back, you're actually never stopping the follower. So the follower will continue in that, that direction with an extra walk, walk, right? So you could extend that out to go, walk, 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 triple step and anchor step. So you could take your sugar push and turn it into an eight count move in essence. Another place that you could add a walk, walk, simply put is think about a whip. One, two, three, and four. So dance one, two, three, and four of a whip in your head. One, two, three, and four. Now what's gonna happen? We're gonna walk five, walk six, and then anchor seven and eight. So if you did the one, two, three, and four, do this in your head, one, two, three, and four, then walk the five, six, keep walking, seven, stop, eight, then anchor step, you'd end up with a 10 beat pattern. So you can extend the walk walks easily in a lot of different places in West Coast Swing if you think about it in two beat increments. Does that answer your question? Mm -hmm. um, three new questions. Three new
we're getting deep, I need a drink. The question was, what's my best guess of how the West Coast swing industry or industries, dance industries in general will recover after this um, pandemic? I guess technically it's probably an endemic because it's not leaving. Um, I think that um, that's up in the air, to be 100% honest. Um, it's for the next medium term, by medium term meaning next year or so, I think it's, it's honestly fairly dicey. And those of us who are in this industry um, have to pay attention to that, right? So what can we do? And the answer is, I don't know. I really don't know. Um, yeah, I mean, stay positive. We're doing what we can and monitoring the situation. Right now, it's almost too quick to tell. I think it will have an impact on our industry, 100%. And I'm in the epicenter of that, right? We have a studio and we run dance events and dance cruises and have online lessons. So our entire business, although diverse in the dance world, is still all based upon the fact that we love to dance, which is congregating groups of people and all touching one another. And one of the things that we have become okay with is we all go to an event every year, the Country Western World Championships, and we all come home after a week in the Opryland Hotel and we have the world's crud, right? Because we're okay, we all get the flu and we're okay with a bunch of us coming home and getting sick afterwards because it's winter time and the flu is going. So what does that look like with this current situation? And I don't know, I don't know how it's gonna, I don't know the, the realities of a different bug being introduced to us and I don't know the realities of how we're all gonna react to it in mass. So will it affect us? Yes. Will some dance studios not be able to absor absorb it? I think the answer is yes. Um, what can we do about it is to pay attention and make the best calls for all of us and then it will sort itself out from there. Um, and I'm, I will probably have a different answer in a week than I will in a month than I will in six months. But um, this is what we do, so we're not going away. And that's why the online space, as long as you're not in groups of 10, we're good to go. Next question. Two more. What's just swing events? What is just swing events? So those would be events that only focus on West Coast Swing. So West Coast Swing is what I like to call a cult event or cult uh, dance. West Coast Swing falls in that category. Salsa, Argentine tango to some degree, at least in my experience. What I mean by cult uh, event is the super hardcore West Coast Swing dancers or Westies will tend to only think about West Coast Swing and West Coast Swing events and that's all they want to do. When they fall asleep at night, that's what they're dreaming of, right? Um, salsa dancers tend to be the same way. Argentine tango dancers tend to be the same way. And that's not saying that all of us are like that, but quite a few of us who get addicted to those particular dances tend to only like that stuff. So what I mean by all swing events are events that only focus on West Coast Swing. And although we run a World Swing Dance Council event, Derby City Swing, last weekend of January, um, we also introduced some country dances to the mix because I like a little bit of a mix um, while still giving people the dance that they're so excited about. So that's what I mean by all West Coast Swing events. All right, two final questions. Two final questions. Because we're already over. Do you like trains? Do I like trains? <laughs> I love that question. Let me tell you why I like that question. Because I live, if I walk out the front of my house, I look to the right down the street, I can see a set of train tracks. I live on the wrong side of the tracks. I've lived in this neighborhood since 2004. For most of the time, over half the time, I lived on that side of the train tracks. And as we sit now, the studio is on this side of the train tracks. And I've lived on this side of the train tracks. Benjamin lives on this side of the train tracks. Miss Emily lives on this side of the train. I used to live on this side of the train tracks. And I moved to the wrong side of the tracks. So to get to the studio, I had to cross the tracks. So that bothered me. But I still like trains and train tracks, and I secretly one day want to be a hobo on a train and see what that's like. So I like that question. All right, final question. If you have any more questions, you better give me a shout out because I'm out of here soon.
For leader, how do you remember moves that you've learned? We wrote an article called Five Ways to Remember Your Patterns. And I'm going to look that up right now. So if you look up uh, Five Ways to Remember Your Patterns in West Coast Swing, you will find our article. And I'm looking it up. Because I wrote this article. So yeah, so if you go to the, uh, the site, West Coast Swing Online, and you go to resources, um, you'll find this. So five ways that we came up with, and I put thought into this. I'm sorry I don't remember it. We've written 300 blog posts. Number one, you should take notes or a video. If you take the video, please watch the video. Um, so take notes or a video. If you actually take the time to write it down, that's actually helpful for your brain. So number one, take notes or uh, take a video. Number two, dance your new steps immediately and often. So if you take a class or a lesson, right after the class or a lesson, go ahead and walk through what you're doing, right? If you've ever been to a workshop and seen a teacher walking through the pattern they're about to teach right before they do it, that's kind of what they're practicing. So you need to practice the new steps immediately and often. After you learn them, when the class is over, oh, that's bad. Hang on, Facebook. Are we back, Facebook? Sorry, Facebook. Hopefully we're back. Facebook, we've got the audio back. <laughs> Is Facebook back? Can everyone hear me? It's 20 second delay. I'm about to fall. Okay. So we're back. So how do we remember our patterns? Number one, you want to take videos or notes. Number two, you want to practice your steps immediately and often. So right after you learn them, take a moment to go walk through everything. Um, when you get home, you can walk through everything. If you wake up the next morning, you can walk through everything. I think you paused there. I am live. Okay. Yeah, there was a pause. Okay. Are we good? Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah, because we dropped off a bunch of people. Um, and then number three, you want to use visualization. So when I was in my super excited about dance phase, I would sit back and imagine my routines. I specifically remember back in 2003, I was thinking in bed about my cha-cha routine. So running that through in your brain can be also super helpful. Um, remember the basic in your pattern. So if you've learned a particular move, you want to understand what the base pattern of that move is. So if it is a, uh, if you learned a whip pattern, you want to imagine a whip and then what are the, the um, adjustments to that whip that you're making to cause it to be the move that you've learned. Number five is to teach it to someone else. And I definitely, I kind of wish we lived in a uh, apprenticeship society where there it were levels. Let me explain it this way. In our current dance culture, there are amateurs and professionals. And we sort of imagine like, oh, Ben is teaching people. He's only an amateur. He's not a professional. But in my world, if you are a newcomer dancer and you move to the novice level, you should teach what you've learned so far, understanding you're not a master, but you should teach that to the newcomer people. If you've moved from the novice to the intermediate level, you should teach the novice people the things that took you to get to the next level. So teaching someone else and the people who work with me um, probably are subjected to this in that I am always talking about the things that I'm learning, not teaching them or showing them, but to reiterate the knowledge in my head. I'm doing that all the time. So if we cover the five keys to uh, remembering your patterns, number one, take notes or a video and review those notes and video. Practice them immediately right after you've learned them, preferably again then maybe the morning or day the next day. Visualize. When you've got downtime, think about remember the, 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 uh, the patterns or moves. Um, remember the basic within your pattern. So think about the pattern in context of what is the basic underlying pattern that that's based on. And number five, teach it to someone else or articulate it in some way. So um, any more comments? To finish out? Uh, one more. 
Ah, we'll do one more. Um, so two comments. Let's cover Megan's. Number one, Facebook Live is on Megan's phone because she has the iPhone 11. I have an iPhone 6 because I won't upgrade to the dongle because I think it's a terrible word for a, an adapter. Um, so she said don't break her phone, Facebook, YouTube, we're good. Um, the second question was when this person goes to West Coast Swing events and there is a two-step, the floor is mobbed, and uh, what are my thoughts about that? So my thoughts are two things. Number one, it might be mob because they don't play a lot of two steps. So they get a little bit and everyone's like, oh my God, I know how to do this. So that's part of it. Number two, I think that um, two step is super, it's the quintessential country dance in, in uh, country bars around the world. And it is not, um, it is not looked at with the same reverence in the West Coast Swing world that it might deserve. Um, and as Two Step makes its um, journey out of the country bars into our dance world of events and studios, I think that it has a place and it is my goal in this stage of my dance career to help bridge it from a social dance and West Coast Swing as well, from a social dance to something that has a little bit of a syllabus and a, a way to teach it um, more uniformly across different studios and different dance events across the world. Um, so that's my thought on two-step. Michelle Kincaid, oh, she is another Hall of Fame West Coast Swing dancer that I spent quite a bit of time with um, in Japan back in the day. So thank you, Michelle. I'll explain who Michelle is to you guys. Two more, Two more questions. Two more, you're still taking them. I'm still taking them. Wait, let's stop there. So someone said at events, only the best social dancers stay to social dance, is that what you said? Yeah, I think there is a culture for the um, high level social dancers to dance late into the evening. Um, and that has a twofold, I think, reason. Number one, they typically, if they're on staff at the event, they're working during the day or they're doing private lessons and workshops and, and competitions. And then they go back up to the rooms, they have something to eat, they chill out for a little bit and they come out later at night. That's number one. Number two, I think that they, the ones that do this every weekend, they will tend to wait later at night because number one, that's the culture, and number two, that helps them avoid the mass of social dancing earlier in the evening where they might get drug onto the floor a whole bunch. Um, and there's different thoughts around that, but next question. At 50, this person says, at 53 years of age, I think um, social dancing starts much too late at events. What are your thoughts about it? And yes and no. And let me explain. Um, yes, I think it starts quite late. But for certain events, and we talked about this way in the early part of this discussion, I think there's three levels of events. There's the hardcore competition events with the highest level people. There are the mid-tier events, which have a wide range. And then there's social only events, which are only social dancing, right? So at the most hardcore competition events, the more competitions that they hold and the more competitive there are, the more time it takes up in the schedule. So those events have no choice if they run all of the competitions and all of the levels and prelims and, and um, Jack and Jill's and Strictly Swings and every single iteration of competition, it physically eats up time in the schedule. So their only choice is to dance late at night. So those events, the culture of the, of the event means that competitors dance during the day. A lot of people take a long break and then they come back out in the social dance late at night. So there's not much, there's not a way around that for some of the events that offer all the competition. Now, does it start too late? Um, for the average social dancer who doesn't do every single competition or want to compete at a super high level, yeah, it probably starts too late. Um, and in our experience at our swing event at the end of January, Derby City Swing 2021, um, we made a conscious effort to offer competition 
but not every, every, every single division. So it allowed us to compress our schedule to start social dancing at a reasonable hour. So we start by like 9.30 every night. Um, but if we were to offer more competitive divisions and spotlight divisions and do a better job of, of supporting the higher level competitions, we would be unable to start social dancing uh, late at night. So it's kind of a pick your poison. If you go to social only dance events, you will not get the highest level of dancer, um, but you will typically start social dancing earlier because there's no um, competition to worry about. So uh, it's neither good nor bad, it's just a different iteration of, and uh, Facebook is a good way to ask questions as to which events suit what your personal needs are. And for us here in Louisville, I'm looking at Emily and Ben behind me, like we wanna support, we have what we call a customer avatar, which is a, um, we kind of picture a specific person in our brain and the person that we're looking for at our event is a competitor or social dancer. And for the social dancers, if they enjoy competition, like they don't mind watching higher level dancing, they just don't want it to ruin their weekend and we want to start social dancing earlier, that's who we're going for. And so those people don't mind that there's competition going on, but they want to make sure that they can social dance at 9, 30, 10 o'clock at night and they don't have to wait till midnight, one in the morning. Um, for the people who go to these big, amazing West Coast Swing events, um, they are much more interested in the competition, the higher level stuff, and they don't care if they stay up till, you know, they don't start, start social dancing till one o'clock in the morning. So two different types of customers. Um, any other questions? Oh my God, Michelle Kincaid's event. That's uh, Mountain Magic. Yeah. So we'll leave on that note because Michelle Kincaid is a Hall of Fame West Coast Swing dancer, a good friend of mine. Mountain Magic um, is in November. It's in, where's Mountain Magic? California? Look it up real quick. Mountain Magic, we'll give a final shout out because I love Michelle Kincaid. Thank you, Becky, for that. Um, and I appreciate it. And so thanks guys for hanging out. We will do uh, more of these moving forward. Uh, keep uh, abreast of everything. West Coast Swing Online slash live. West Coast Swing Online slash live. We will continue to share that link. And uh, thanks for the, the support. And make sure if you guys are not already signed up for the email list, you go to westcoastswingonline.com. Enter your email address on the front page. You'll get a free membership and some free videos. Cool but more importantly, you're on our email list. So share this with your friends, um, all the cool stuff, and we will continue to support you guys. Send us an email. We are, all the team of us are on top of this, trying to get these live feeds worked out, and, and I'm sure we'll get better. We're a little bit better today than we were before. Um, Lake Tahoe, yay! Um, West Coast Swing said they loved our event, Derby City Swing, because we had short social dancing after every classes through the day. Um, so that's one of the things we did at our swing event. And uh, those of you guys who have workshops and events, I encourage this because it worked really, really, really well for us. We did a workshop and then we had, do we have like an hour break? Let's just go with 30 minute breaks. Like, it depends on the day. Depends on the day. But instead of workshop from nine to 10, workshop from 10 to 11, workshop from 11 to 12, that gets grinding. Every single weekend workshop I've been at, every single uh, event I've been at, those schedules get grinding. So I recommend you guys, if you're planning workshops and events and with your schedules, um, leave 30 minute breaks between the workshops. It lets people run to the restroom, get a drink of water, talk to the instructor, practice what they've learned. And then from there, um, I think the schedule is much more relaxed. It allows for less classes, but I think a better overall experience. So. Um, Yay, Michelle says, I love you too. I love you, Michelle, and we will have to catch up on Facebook. Um, I appreciate you, and we should share some good memories, and I'm gonna share some of our memories from Japan back in the day with Robert and Hiro, God rest our souls, with my friends behind the camera. So on that note, I love you guys. We're out, we'll see you tomorrow. Um, what's on the schedule tomorrow? Beginner West Coast Swing at eight, and Intermediate West Coast Swing at 8.30 at, uh, ish 
eight o'clock class will uh, have to begin and end on schedule and the intermediate class will go a little bit longer. So love you guys, thanks, and we'll see you again on a dance floor soon.